All right, so I finally found the perfect solution for the 12 volt charge to 12 volt. So those of you who have been looking for a way to charge while you drive, have I got a solution for you today? And I'm gonna walk you through not only what it is, but how to hook it up, complete with wiring diagrams. So here we go, let's get right into it. All right, so the Orion XS 12 12 50 amp charger. It sounds like Victron was listening to us. Not only does this work from battery to battery, it is actually designed exactly for this purpose. So this will allow you to connect your 12 volt charger on your automobile with your uh, alternator directly to the batteries in your either your RV, your van, or your solar batteries. All right, so let's go through some of the features that this has. And first, the key feature is it's 50 amps, believe it or not. And I am telling you this device is thin, it's small, it works really well, and it doesn't have the big heat sinks that you see on other Victron devices. They have obviously got the efficiency here very, very well done because there's very little heat production coming from it. The next feature is DC-DC smart charging. Now, the smart charging that we're talking about here is that this is designed to safely allow you to charge lithium, AGM, or lead acid batteries. It's fully configurable, and this is probably the, one of the nicest features here. Let me show you what I mean. It is pro fully programmable through the standard Victron Victron Connect app. Let me try to say that three times real quick. The Victron Connect app basically allows for screens like you see here. Now, the ones that I have here are not from this specific device. It is from a charge, uh, a, a, just a regular charger. But the configuration settings are very similar to the same. It allows you to configure the charge voltage. It allows you to configure not only that, but when it, it can detect that the alternator or the generator is on and it will automatically turn on your charging and when you shut your car off it'll automatically turn it off so no more going and saying turn it on when i'm driving turn it off when i'm done oops i forgot and it ran down my car batteries no more of that this one will automatically take care of that for you with fully programmable through the victron connect app and bluetooth so that you can get to it right from your phone without internet required or anything like that all right, some other features that it has is the temperature and voltage compensation. Now, what I mean by this is as it gets hot and this thing doesn't even have a giant heat sink on it, sink on it. So it will dissipate the heat very well. It's very, very low uh, uh, performa, fits in really nice tight spaces. And this one you will be very happy with, but not only that, but it automatically adjusts down to control the heat and allows you to compensate for that heat in situations where you are in a van or a truck and you're in a very hot environment or something along those lines. So it can take care of those features automatically for you, which is very nice. Compact and fanless, silent and rugged, easy to mount, an idea for tight, vans or RV spaces. And when I say this, and I know I mentioned it before, but I'm not stressing it too much here. This is the perfect solution for vans, for R for little RVs, for caravans, for all of those type of, of living where you want to drive from one place to another and take advantage of that alternator where you can configure it to take a certain amount of voltage from it and you can configure it to turn on and you can configure it to turn off. Not only that, it's silent, it's quiet, and it's fanless. So there's no moving parts for it to burn out eventually. This, this is just a fantastic device. And full electrical protection. This is very important, especially in van units. And I'll go over the wiring diagrams later to show you how to, to get some additional protection from grounding and things like that. But the over temperature protection, the short circuit protection, and the, uh, the reverse polarity protection built into the device is very important 
That'll keep you from burning out your device accidentally, getting a simple wire in the wrong place and causing the whole thing to get trashed and throwing everything away. So these are wonderful features. This device, and I'm gonna get right into exactly how you can configure it and how you wire it coming up next. This device should solve all the problems and questions that all of you have had about 12 volt charging while you're driving. All right, so let's take a look at the connection ports. Now, underneath the panel that you see here on the bottom, there are two little screws that hold this in. And when you release those screws, what I like about this device is it allows you to put the, to take the cover off so you can clearly see the wire clamps underneath it and where you can put these in and you can clearly see the screws. One of the problems I've always had with some of the Victron devices is they expected you to put the screwdrivers through these little covers on the top and kind of guess where it was, where you had to wiggle it around and move it around and everything. And in this particular case, they've actually put two little screws here that you can see that hold this cover on. So once you're done mounting this, you can easily get to um, hooking, you can easily get to the screws and stuff that are on there and disconnect and connect those wires. All right, so let's get into the dot wiring diagram of exactly how this device is hooked up. So I have outlined here the very basic diagram so that you at least understand the wiring. And then I've got another slide that follows this with a much more involved op uh, options that you can put onto it to make it a better uh, make it a better fit for you. So let's start here with the simple connection of your alternator source battery. The alternator source battery's positive wire needs to run up into this side of the end. Now, the end is basically meaning the power is coming in from this side and it goes out this side and to the positive side of the battery that you're charging. The neutral or ground wire is a shared wire and this should be across the, the, the same here. Now, if we take this to the next step. All right, we're going to move on to a much more uh, complete wiring setup here. And I'm going to show you how to connect a few devices that are help you with your, with your safety and that will also help you with convenience of maintenance and stuff going forward. And a little bit of monitoring stuff also. So let's start on the positive side coming from your source battery. The source battery and the destination battery both, I have included an off on switch because you have the ability to shut this system down from the in power and the out power. I thought it was important that both sides of this would need a shut off switch to allow you to, to turn off and on the power when you needed to work on it or maintain it. Um, that said, uh, on the negative side, there are a few extra connections here that you're gonna want to look at. And you can see on the, the first one coming from the source side here is a smart shunt. Now I have included links for all of the devices listed on this screen in the, in the comments down below. Feel free to get them. All the diagrams and everything are on my email list. If you haven't signed up for that, sign up down below. There'll be a complete uh, 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 diagrams. PDF files for this particular video and all my future videos also. And that's how you access them is through the email list. Uh, so the smart shunt, I put the 300 amp smart shunt here. Victron also sells a 500 amp smart shunt for only a few dollars more. Uh, it's up to you which one you want. It does allow to for good monitoring of what's going in the battery and it allows you to easily keep track of that. This could also be used in addition to when this battery is feeding in to monitor everything going in and out of the battery as opposed to just what this is feeding. So that should allow you that multiple thing. I included here a bus bar. Now I show a two post bus bar because I didn't think it was necessary to go with a full four or a six post bus bar, but that is up to you. I've included down below both the four and the two uh, post bus bar. The bus bar here is allowing you to connect the smart shunt to the bus bar. And then from the bus bar, you also need to connect the ground to the actual device itself. And then on the other side, I have included a ground, a chassis ground. 
and then going to the battery. Now the chassis ground is not absolutely 100% necessary, but it is important to have to level out all the noise across the systems and to make your charging and the voltage a little bit more consistent. I suggest that it is there for good safety reasons and that you should do it. That is my suggestion. Reading about it, it says it's absolutely it's not absolutely necessary, but I think that it is a good my suggestion is go ahead and connect it just to be safe and to make sure that your device can be operated safely. At the same time, I'm not an electrician, so please if you're uncomfortable with what you're doing, seek one's advice to do what you need to do. This is how I would hook it up, not how I would suggest that you hook it up. Okay, moving on from there, there is one other item that I did notice on here. The recommendation wire size from zero to five feet for a six aug wire is 50 amps. So as long as you're within three, or excuse me, two and a half feet, because that is full distance round trip, that isn't just one way. So that means you're positive going to the batteries and then positive coming, uh, negative coming back from the batteries. And that means that you're going all the way from this side through the device, back out, and this way all the way back to here. So it does need to be under five feet. Otherwise, you'll need to use four aug wire for five to 10 feet. That means you can be up to five feet away and it is full length again, all the way around the cycle. Uh, and then I did put in here from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40 feet, but I did make them in red as the post here does not support that size of a wire. But what I would suggest in that nature is that you intercept these with a little bus bar or something right in front of it and only make the short connector piece here to the switch to this one connect and from this switch to this one connect with the smaller four aug wire and then the rest of it can go with two aught or one aught wire because that's going to be the travel distance wire and that should solve and, and, and resolve that problem for you. All right, uh, as I said, everything is included in the email. I hope at this point, if you've watched this far, that this value, you find this value video of value. Please make sure you like it. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe so that you can catch on the next one. And thank you very much. I appreciate it.